In the last video, we divided Matthew into two parts. Today, we're going to look closely at the first part. Jesus comes as the king to his Jewish nation and is rejected. First of all, we must ask ourselves two questions. Does the Gospel of Matthew describe Jesus as king of Israel? And secondly, why? It's quite easy to see that Matthew speaks about Jesus as king because this is what the first verse is about. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David. But he wasn't David's son as such, but a descendant and therefore from the royal lineage. Also, Matthew uses the word fulfilled more often than any other Gospels. Jesus fulfills the Old Testament prophecies. That's the point. He is the long-awaited King and Messiah. All the way through the book, we will see how he is presented as King. And at the end, he is mainly accused and crucified for being the King of the Jews. But Jesus is not only a king, he is also a high priest, a prophet, a bridegroom, the son of God, etc. So why does the New Testament start with Jesus being a king? Well, Christians primarily know Jesus as their savior, lord and bridegroom, but Jesus did not come for Christians in the first place. Christianity did not even exist at the first coming of Christ, but Israel did. And Israel was waiting for a king. And Matthew is trying to explain how we go from the idea of a Jewish king to a universal savior, a savior for all. All this is foreshadowed in the first two chapters, like a trailer for a movie. The king comes and is rejected by Israel. The people sleep while the elite wants him dead. In the meanwhile, the nations depicted by the wise men come from far away and worship him. So in chapter 4, he gathers his disciple around him and in chapter 5 he opens the Magna Carta for his kingdom. It's basically a declaration of how things should happen in the kingdom. Now remember that at this point Jesus has not revealed anything about the church. The nations are still complete outsiders to grace. He's only speaking to Jews. And then he heals people, but not randomly. He works messianic miracles. Now, what does that mean? Certain kinds of healing were common but others hadn't been done since the time of the Old Testament. And the Jewish tradition had established that when the Messiah would come, he would work these miracles. So in doing these miracles, Jesus is basically claiming, I'm the Messiah. But he goes even further. In chapter 10, he sends out his disciples to spread the good news. So is that the gospel? Not as you and I understand it. Why? Firstly, because the gospel of the cross is based on the cross. But Jesus had not yet died. Secondly, because the gospel is for everybody. But this gospel was not for everybody. Jesus specifically said, Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's called the gospel of the kingdom. The message is not, Jesus died for you on the cross, but the kingdom promised by the prophets in the Old Testament is ready to come in. And it's only for Israel. So the Jewish leaders hear about this Jesus, or Jehoshua as he would have been called, and they check him out. First, just by watching him and then eventually questioning him about the law and his origins, etc. And the tension is growing because he does not play the game their way. He even starts accusing them. See, God came in human form so the condition of the heart would be revealed. God made it easy for repenting sinners to enter the kingdom and impossible for intellectual cold-hearted Bible scholars. So then in chapter 11, the majority of those who lived in his hometown rejected him. And in chapter 12, the leaders rejected him and his movement. And then comes a turning point. God puts the David program on hold and starts the Abraham program. And what this is about We'll see in the next video. Thank you everyone for watching this video and thank you very much for tuning in here at Crosspaint where we uh, try to ignite a passion in people for Jesus and we think that only the Holy Spirit and the Bible can do this and hence we transform the Bible in little Bible animation videos and we hope you take your Bible and you read it for yourself um, the wonderful truth that is conveyed in these videos. Um, yeah, we're in the middle of Matthews I'm um, looking forward to see the next videos and thank you so much for sticking with us. Bye.